Hello and welcome to another part of building the industrial zone in Rockdale. Now, this is where we left off last time. I was building the railroad to connect this uh, cargo station, this freight terminal. And then I'm just going to connect, uh, uh, sorry, continue building uh, the surrounding area, which is the second upper quadrant. This is actually going to be the last quadrant that we need to do. And this is actually the last video, well, not of the series, no, not yet. There's still quite a few things that, uh, quite a lot of things that we need to do, actually. Need to do some changes and some, you know, polishing and stuff like that. But uh, this is going to be the last video where I'm going to build the basic shape of the zone. After today's video, the zone is going to be, it's actually going to be working already. I can already uh, unpause the game and just set it off and observe how it works. On the live stream, the zone is actually 100% finished, so I can finally, I'm actually safe to say, finally, that uh, I'm not showing you here something that's uh, absolutely 100% not going to work. The zone actually works. It has its flaws, sure, that there are some traffic problems that are the result of just some compromises that I was talking about earlier, but uh, overall it works quite all right. I was still doing some, you know, tweaking and stuff like that, and I really managed to get it working, so... We can just observe that uh, what we are building here is going to work, yeah. Anyway, back to the, to the things that we can see. So, I'm building the second upper quadrant. As you can see, I'm uh, already populating it with uh, these Miyagi Motors buildings. As I was explaining in the previous video, uh, this uh, second upper quadrant is going to have these uh, two main industrial streets in the middle. We, we might actually call it like one street, but it's going to be these two parallel roads with the tram going in between them. It's going to be very nice that it's going to be going like that because it's going to bring all the, all the workers into the buildings without much problems. In here I'm uh, trying to position the the last, actually, this is the last Miyagi Motors, or just in general, the last uh, cargo station that I need to build. And I also did some of these gravel roads to kind of mark the lo final location of, uh, well, not the final location, but just mark the final shape of the of the station and the, uh, and the roads connecting to it. In here, I finalized the shape and the position of uh, of the train station. And I actually built some of these uh, industrial buildings uh, right next to it. So it's not completely alone. And it's looking, you know, better, a bit better. Connecting it uh, to the railroad network, as you can see, using Move It. And just uh, doing these, uh, doing these little details to kind of, uh, well, to connect uh, the, the station to the rest of the zone, obviously. I was... Uh, kind of trying to save space in here, although it was not really necessary because we are at the edge of the zone and uh, it's not necessary to save any space because after this point we are not going to build anything. But uh, saving space is almost always looking good, so why not? Now we are moving to the other side of the upper, uh, second upper quadrant of the, of the zone and finishing up the end of these two, two main roads. I decided I want to do some kind of a roundabout in here. Well, it's... I'm not sure. It's technically probably not a roundabout because it's not going to have... Well, no, actually roundabouts... Okay, never mind, never mind. <laughs> but yeah, actually, no, it's, uh, it's not going to be probably a roundabout because uh, it's going to be... It's going to have only one way road access and it's going to have only one-way road exits, so I'm not sure. Maybe it's not a roundabout. I'm probably going to call it a roundabout anyway. So it's going to have the two input roads. Those are going to be the main roads, the parallel roads. And then it's going to have uh, three output roads. As you can see here, I'm building the last one right now. So one road to the cargo station going downtown, one road to the cargo station to the Miyagi motor station that I built uh, just a few seconds ago. That's going to go over the river to the other parts of the town. And one connection, the, the highway connection, 
back to the main highway network. So that's kind of straightforward, simple, pretty much exactly the same. Same kinds of connections that I had to do uh, in all of the quadrants in the zone, really. Now I'm bringing the, the tram to the, to the roundabout. I'm not exactly sure. Well, at this point in the game, I thought to myself that, OK, I'm going to end the, the tram at this point. But in the future, I'm probably going to stretch it to go into different areas as well, because it's probably not a good idea to end it in here, because I'm probably going to do some more locations residential locations probably after this industrial zone but I don't really have any like particular plans for it so uh, that's why I built the, the kind of a terminus loop in here I was trying to make it uh, so that it would resemble the tram loops from real life at least from my city from my country I don't know I think I kind of succeeded it's not looking that bad obviously the main point is that it's uh, symmetrical. Now we are back in the first lower quadrant. It's kind of getting a bit confusing. I had I have to think a bit before before describing the the, the quadrants we are in. Anyway, I am building a tram depot in here. Why? Well, basically, I had at this point in the game, I think I had uh, two tram depots uh, elsewhere in the city. And uh, I'm I was always kind of pushing them away from uh, from where I was building because they are producing quite a lot of noise, and I was always kind of putting them in the residential areas. So that's not exactly the greatest thing ever. So then I decided to do to do just uh, one tram depot for the entire city inside the industrial zone. The building itself kind of looks industrial, and. Uh, Obviously, the industrial buildings around it don't care about uh, the noise. In here, I'm just trying to place a few buildings so that the entire zone is in the uh, in the power grid. As you could see here, oh, a few seconds ago, I was checking the, the power grid view. So everything was connected. Now we are going to leave the industrial zone for, for a few minutes, seconds, minutes probably. And I'm going to focus on the main highway connection, which is this uh, trumpet interchange. Now, what do we need to change? Well, the new zone and the old zone, they both have those uh, three lane highways that we can see right now in the right upper corner. So I obviously need to make some kind of uh, separate connections to, to both of them from the highway network. So technically, I'm actually going to change this intersection so that it's four way intersection. It's not going to be like 100% four-way intersection, but, uh, well, I just need to modify it, yeah, like that. It's probably not, no longer going to be a trumpet interchange, it's going to be some kind of a hybrid between a trumpet and a clover leaf, I guess, because I am going to build um, a very simple, simple loop. So as you can see, everything needs to be kind of split to go to the new zone, to the old zone, and then obviously we need to merge you know, the return roads from the new zone and from the old zone back to together and then to the highway, to the main highway network. I was not exactly building it uh, like super precisely. I was using Move It a lot in here, as you can see. I'm just trying to make it so that uh, it looks all right. I wasn't, uh, you know, using uh, the curved road tools, for example. I was not really measuring angles like I sometimes do when I'm creating intersections, or interchanges, sorry. Uh, this was actually kind of a trial and error, but it was like, it was kind of missing the a lot of the error parts. I was, I was building it so, well, I was building it uh, like I said, okay, I'm going to try something, and then it usually worked, so I kept it. So I didn't need to, I didn't need to destroy a lot of things or change a lot of things. So on the live stream, this actually took me just uh, just a few tens of minutes, I guess. It wasn't all that hard, all that long. And I'm not really forced to save a lot of space around the interchange, so that was not an issue as well. 
So I built the loop, as you could see. So this kind of, you know, makes it into some kind of a hybrid interchange, like I said. It's no longer a proper trumpet interchange. In here I'm destroying the bypass road that was uh, kind of bypassing this uh, the cloverleaf something highway interchange that I, I actually did a video on that one. I'm not sure about the name anymore. And in here, I'm doing a very important connection. I'm doing a connection that's going to go back from the, well, either from the old zone, back to the old zone and the new zone. And the other way around, from the new zone, back to the old one or the new one again for for some traffic that, for example, delivers goods first to a building that's uh, near the end of some zone, and then it wants to go back and deliver goods to a building that's um, at the front of the zone, for example. Again, I'm not really saving space in here. Uh, some I remember that some viewers uh, on the live stream actually told me that I was not exactly saving space, and I probably should have, but since I'm not really planning on building anything in that location, maybe some light residential areas or some offices, I'm not sure. I'm not really forced to save that much space there. So at this point, I could easily just uh, hit the space bar and unpause the game and the zone would work. In here I'm just uh, tidying up some details, just trying to make everything nice, obviously making all the streets into one one ways, uh, deleting some of the some of the connections that should not be there. And as you can see here, I'm actually already having the game unpaused and there's there's traffic going on in the zone. Finishing up the tram connection to the to the industrial zone, as you can see. Just uh, creating some kind of an entrance road, actually. And in here, I was uh, already starting to kind of decorate the area. I'm not really building these uh, office buildings. These are office buildings, by the way. I'm not really creating them to deal with, you know, unemployment or just, you know, create jobs for, for the city. I'm really doing them as, as a decoration. So this is going to be like the front office area of the zone. This is going to be the first office area that, you know, arrivals into the zone are going to see. So that's probably going to be some, I don't know some lower management offices, I don't know. I'm going to do some uh, more office building inside the zone that might be, in real life, that probably would have been some kind of a, I don't know, research and development maybe, who knows, you know. All the people that are usually not exactly visible in these kinds of uh, companies, in these kinds of factories. Anyway, putting these streets uh, to the one lane variant, one way rare, one way variant, sorry, and creating these little intersections in here so that I can create these uh, crosswalks and pedestrian connections to the to the tram uh, stations. And obviously banning the cargo and personal traffic on them, but not services. It's always a good idea to create some bypass connections for service vehicles only. And uh, just to have some fun, this is a footage of me actually creating the bridge for the trams. And this is the, the view that I had when I unpaused the game and I had all the trams going onto their lines from this newly built depot. It created quite a big uh, tram jam that lasted for, for a long time actually. But everything went back to normal after it settled. So that was fine. In here I was creating a Again, another kind of a terminus loop for a different different tram tram line that's going to go into the zone, but I didn't really want to want to want it to uh, stretch the entire line to the to the edge of the edge of the zone. So I built the loop in here because this is kind of the start of the zone pretty much for the trams, that is. And this is exactly what I was talking about. I'm just uh, doing these uh, kind of a decorative buildings, although these are industrial buildings with actually some interesting numbers of workers. So this is going to, you know, help the industrial zone be the industrial zone. But this is pretty much the decorations. Yeah, as you can see, building the parking lot, some of them, just filling up the place, basically. Using Surface Painter quite heavily in here. As you can see, 
this already is like the second phase of uh, building the entire zone because I'm starting to decorate it. In the new zone, apart from the, well, compared to the, to the old zone that I featured on the channel some time ago, uh, in here I'm going to use trees quite a lot. And what's kind of interesting is that, well, some of the trees, the vanilla trees, well, I'm not actually sure if maybe the modded trees actually look like that as well, but uh, the vanilla trees, they look kind of dead when placed on ground that has pollution. At least the the generic trees, those, you know, normal trees, I'm not sure what they're called, but then you have those, uh, I think, oak trees, or they are supposed to be oak trees, and those, if you put uh, on a polluted ground, they're actually going to change color to a very nice uh, shades of orange or red. So I'm going to be using those quite a lot because, uh, I don't know, they're just adding some, some nice touch to the, to the zone. As you can see, I'm just filling up the place, parking lots and some random buildings. At this point, I'm still trying to do mostly, uh, sorry, industrial buildings. But later in the zone, when I'm actually going to be observing traffic as well, how traffic works, I'm going to be doing offices as well, because I think I was hitting some, uh, some peaks when it comes to peak capacity for the train stations or some of the train stations. So I actually had to limit the number of uh, industrial buildings, but more on that later, in later videos actually, not in this one. Lots of trees, lots and lots of trees. This was actually kind of a common theme. At this point on the live stream, I started putting a lot of trees pretty much any, everywhere in the city. And we might have already seen there that when I was put, when I was doing those oak trees, the ones that kind of have the like a brownish color normally, they change into, into a very nice uh, orange-ish colors that I, that I really like. It's a nice, nice change. Definitely adds it. It adds a new color into the into the zone because the zone is otherwise, you know, the Miyagi Motors buildings are kind of brown, black, gray, and you know the concrete is already gray. The roads are also kind of a grayish uh, shade. So doing some different color is obviously going to liven it up a bit, especially the green color. In here, I, you can definitely see that. Uh, these uh, nicely colored trees are just adding a completely whole new feeling to the to decorations in here. Unfortunately, the other trees are not looking all that great. They kind of look dead. Also using surface painter a lot, as you can see here. And this is actually going to be like the first hint of what I'm going to be doing in the in the next videos actually because after I put the traffic into the zone well this is actually not uh, a rework because of uh, bad traffic situation this is pretty much done so I can save some space and build some structures in here but uh, I was not at this point I was not uh, admitting that I would need to do the zone differently in the in the future but I will have to do some serious changes. Uh, I'm not going to spoil anything for the future videos. Well, people who watch the live stream already know that, obviously. But there has to be there had there had to be some changes. Uh, as I said, I'm already you know the zone already works. There is already traffic, and we were actually starting to have uh, some traffic issues. So in the next video, I believe. We are going to do some changes to the to the train stations, actually, which uh, kind of took me a long time. I'm not sure. Maybe it's going to take a majority or better part of uh, the next video. Anyway, with this video, we are coming to the 20 minute mark again. So this is where we are going to end. In this video, I definitely covered a lot. Uh, I think I took uh, like two live streams to cut this video, so it was a lot of a lot of things that we did. Anyway, have fun and I'll see you in the next video.